Hey everyone, my name is Chad Carson. You can also call me Coach. And in this video, I'm gonna show you a technique where you can pay your rental properties off early. The technique is called a debt snowball. And a lot of you might be familiar with that in personal finances. People use it to pay off credit card debt, student debt, that sort of thing. But as a real estate investor, you can also use the same technique to pay off your rental properties. So I'm gonna show you not only how to do it, but how this can help you achieve financial independence. So starting with a very small amount of money, you can invest that money, you can buy rental properties, you can build up some wealth with those rental properties, and then you can start using the cash flow to pay them off, and in the end, have a maybe a small portfolio, maybe a big portfolio, depending on your goals, but have a portfolio of rental properties that produce a lot of income every single month and a very low risk way of doing that so that you can live off the income and do what matters. That's the motto around here at Coach Carson TV. So I hope you're interested and stick around as I show how to do that. If you're new here to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the little bell so you don't miss anything. This is how I like to explain things. I get the whiteboard and draw it out for you. And I wanna start off explaining why this might be a good idea for you to actually pay off your properties in the first place. I talk a lot about financial independence here on this channel. And one of the very simple scenarios that I want you to consider, and this isn't necessarily the numbers that you have to use if you're gonna have a goal to achieve financial independence, but I found this is a, just a nice clear idea on where you might wanna go with your rental properties. So let's say you wanted to get 10 houses and you could buy these 10 houses and you originally maybe make a down payment and you have a loan, but one of these days, and use the techniques I'm gonna talk about here in this video, you get them paid off. And each one of your houses rents for $1,200 per month. So that's what you collect from your tenant. If, since you have 10 of them, that's $12,000 per month. Of course, you have some expenses and that's gonna vary from house to house, but let's say your total expenses on all your properties is $5,000 per month. And you would net, you'd have left over after your expenses, $7,000. Now this 5,000 doesn't include your mortgage because in the end scenario we're talking about here, you've paid off your properties. So you make $7,000 per month or $84,000 per year from a simple 10 house portfolio. And I like to start off with this example before we get into the nitty gritty of how to do it, because if you imagine for yourself, you know, maybe this number is good, maybe this number is way more than you need, maybe you need a lot more than this. But the point is $84,000 for a lot of people can be all they need in retirement. This can pay their bills, they can live comfortably, and you can do it with a very simple portfolio of properties that you can manage yourself, you can hire a property manager, but I have more properties in this than in our own portfolio, and we can spend a few hours per week, one to three hours per week, doing the bookkeeping, taking care of things. And so this can be a very part-time, passive thing to help you achieve financial independence. So let's talk about how you might be able to get there using the rental debt snowball. Now I've explained why you might wanna do a rental debt snowball to achieve financial independence and to have income from your rental properties. Now I wanna explain how it works. And I can do that in five steps. Now these first three steps I'm gonna explain are pretty much the same whatever type of investing you're using with a mortgage and trying to buy rental properties. But simply with number one, you're just gonna save your cash. Now yes, there are ways to get into real estate with a little bit less money down, especially if you're gonna move into the property and use like a lower down payment loan program like FHA loans or VA loans. There's all sorts of programs out there. I can show you in some other videos how those work. But the bottom line is you're typically gonna to have to have some cash to get started. So just count on having a period of saving money. Step number two is to purchase some rental properties. And you can think of this as your growth or your wealth building phase, where you have to go out and purchase those rental properties. And this could take a few years on these first two steps to get to the point where you have a certain number of rental properties and you're gonna invest, all, you're gonna save all of your cash at that stage to buying more rental properties. So step number three is that once you have those rental properties, both the first one and the second one, and third one, let's say you buy multiple rental properties, you're gonna save 100% of that income that you have from your rental properties plus any other job savings you have. So you're gonna save 100% of that. And the reason I say that is sometimes people get like a 15 year mortgage or a 20 year mortgage and they go ahead and start trying to pay that loan down quickly the prop that one particular property. The strategy here is not to pay down each property separately. The strategy is to get the longest mortgage you can, like a 30 year mortgage perhaps, and then you save 100% of the income on each rental property, plus as much as you can from your job in order to do step number four. Now step number four, and here's the key of the rental debt snowball, is instead of paying down each individual property, 
And now that you've owned enough, bought enough rental properties, instead of buying more rental properties, you're gonna take all of the savings you can, as much as money as you can save, and you're gonna apply it to one loan at a time. So that's the key here. If you take all of those extra savings, and I'll show you some numbers and an example here in a second, you can actually pay your loan off a lot faster. We're talking about like four years, six years, seven years, instead of a 30 year mortgage. And you can do that instead of spreading it out over multiple properties, it comes, it goes a lot faster by concentrating. That's why I say all here. And that's why you apply it to one loan. And the cool thing is this is like a step-by-step -step process. You can repeat it. So if you have multiple rental properties, you can do one. And the first rental property might take a certain period of time, let's say five or six years. The second one, because you freed up the cash flow from that rental property you just paid off, you've now increased your snowball. You're starting to roll that snowball. It's getting bigger and bigger and it's starting to compound. The second one goes faster then the third one, then the fourth one, however many rental properties you want to pay off. It's very flexible. You can stop, you can start. And, and so that's the basic process. Let's take a look at some numbers and an example about how that works. I want to give a specific example and I'm going to keep it simple. You know, if you want to do more properties than this, you're welcome to multiply the numbers and get as big as you need to, but this will make it easy to understand. Let's say you have a goal of having three houses free and clear. You're going to buy three properties, and at some point in the future, you wanna get them free and clear. And I recommend this as a, a way to work it backwards. You know, start with the number of properties you think you need, and then you work it backwards to actually buying the properties. And let's say you, you know, this is gonna depend on your location, the type of property you buy, but let's say in the, this particular market, you can buy a three bedroom, two bath uh, house, the garage, because it's easier to manage and you'll find tenants who'll stay a long time. So you're gonna follow that strategy, easy to manage. And let's say this property rents for $1,200 per month and has $500 in expenses. So these are things like taxes, insurance, maintenance, capital expenses, things like that, not including your mortgage payment. So when it's free and clear, you'll have $700 per month using today's numbers. And if you had three properties, that's 2,100 per month in income. So this might be a way you're doing this on the side. You have other income in retirement too. This is a way to supplement your retirement. So that's the scenario of what this goal might look like. Let's look at the actual properties that you buy and look at the mortgage and the down payments, things like that. Okay, so the scenario in this example is that you have good credit and you can go to the bank and get a loan, a long-term investor mortgage by putting 20% down. So we had three houses, remember? And of course, this, these numbers are gonna depend, or depend on your location. If you're in somewhere in California, New York, you're gonna say these numbers are ridiculous to buy a regular single family house. But I happen to have a couple of smaller towns right near my metropolitan area where I could buy a little bit below median property. The median price might be like 180,000. And we might be able to find a good deal on a rental property. These aren't gonna be just any old property. You got to search and find some properties, but let's say you find $120,000 property. You, you buy it for 120, you put 20% down to 24,000. You get a loan for 96,000. In my example, I'm gonna use four and a half percent interest, 30 year mortgage. If you're keeping track of that on the side. You have some closing costs and holding costs on the side as well. So just to figure out how much cash you need to save, you have 29,000 on this first deal. The second deal you buy a little bit later and you buy a little bit higher price. So the numbers are a little bit higher. You have $30,000 down on that one. The next one's a little bit higher. You have 31,000 down on that one. So you buy three properties, very similar properties. This is how much cash you have invested total. So $90,000 total. And that gets you to the point where you have your three properties. The other thing about these three properties is they produce income. Remember the numbers I shared with you, they each rent for 1200 bucks and they, after expenses, the operating expenses, they make $700 a piece, but they also have mortgages at this point because we have, that's how we bought the properties. So each property has a mortgage payment, 487, 507, 527. And this is how much money they make net income every single month after paying all the bills before taxes. But typically at this stage, you're gonna have enough tax shelter called depreciation. It's a whole nother subject, but most of the time, this is also going to be your after tax income. So you take this $579 per month, and that's how much you have from your rental properties after a year or two, after you've bought these properties, that's how much your little rental business is producing an extra income. So now we've set the stage on what those three properties you bought look like. Let's look at the cash flow that you produce so that you can start doing the debt snowball. So remember you have $579 per month in net cash flow from your rental properties. We just looked at that. That's the difference between your rent you collect, the operating expenses you have, and then your mortgage payments. That's the total you have. And you're not going to use the cash flow on each property to pay down each one. You're going to save that money, set it aside in a savings account. You then also, I'm going to assume you can save $500 per month 
from your job. So you're still working a job. And if you have a, pal, a spouse or a partner, they're working as well. And hopefully you can save 500 bucks. If you can do more than that, this is gonna accelerate it even better. But for my example, I'm gonna use $500 per month. And then of course you have one mortgage payment we're gonna start paying off. And in this example, the first for house number one was $487 per month. So we're gonna combine all of those into one big mega mortgage payment. This is just an extra large mortgage payment. Instead of you sending 487 per month, you could send 1,566 per month. Now for all practical purposes, sometimes you might wanna actually send a separate check or something just for accounting purposes, or, or, or you just wanna make sure you track it really closely. Banks don't always credit this correctly, so you can you know, keep your accounting records, keep copies of what you've done. Sometimes I even do it a little bit of variation. This is a total aside, but we actually save up the money and save one big chunk and maybe send it every 12 months, especially when we're saving up a lot of money. It's gonna be not quite as good of a snowball, not quite as fast, but sometimes the accounting is just easier for us. So however you wanna do it, whether you do it monthly, send, send this check monthly, or save the extra money and send it once per year, it's up to you, but that's just a note about how that works. You're gonna make one big extra payment every single month in this example, and that's what it is, $1,566. Now what I wanna show you now is how fast and what this looks like and how this snowball starts working together over time. So this graphic is something I wanna show you how this big picture works for your rental debt snowball. You can also see this graphic and a written explanation in the companion article that's in the description of this video. But the way this works, remember in the very beginning, you had original savings of $90,000 and you bought three properties. So we've gone over what those numbers look like. Just a summary here again, you have a debt of, and you hear your debt payments, 487, 507, and 527. And your monthly cash flow on a yearly basis right now is $6,948. That's how much you're saving up when you have your rental income coming in. But the key strategy here, this was to make the rental debt snowball work, is you reinvest 100% of the rental income, plus in my example, you're saving an extra $6,000 per year, $500 per month, and you're applying all of that to one rental property at a time. So this one house that we had 487 per month, by doing that, about five years and 10 months later, I did the math for you, running the numbers on how long that would take with that extra big mortgage payment. Remember, 1,566 when you combine the minimum mortgage payment plus the extra cash flow from your savings and from the rental income. It pays that first rental property off in five years and 10 months. Pretty cool, huh? And so the cool thing is you, you start moving up step by step. You have the progress of that and you now have a property free and clear that has no mortgage payment. So now your rental cash flow has increased from that original that we had was 6,948 to now you're making 12,792. So a little bit over a thousand bucks per month. Plus you're still saving the extra money, the $500 per month, and you start attacking debt number two, a $507 per month payment. And that takes a, a total from the, year, from the time you started, the cumulative time is nine years and 10 months. So you're almost at 10 years and now you have two properties free and clear. So I have one more to go. And, but now you're making $18,876 per year. So you're making some good cash flow now. And you apply that to your third debt in, a, in 12 years and nine months from when you started. So this is when, when you started buying your properties to the time you have all three properties free and clear. You're now making $25,200 per year in cash flow. Pretty cool, huh? Because you have no mortgage payments, because you applied those extra payments really quickly, you end up with a spot where you have very little risk because you don't have any mortgages, you have higher cash flow. And the thing I didn't take into account here is 12 years later, is it possible that you've had some appreciation on your rent, that your rents are worth more, that if things cost more in society generally, you've had some inflation? Likely, if you bought good rental properties like this, this number is gonna be higher. So it's, it, it buys you to, in today's dollars likely $25,000 worth of income. So that is the process of a rental debt snowball. I like seeing a picture of it. It helps me understand it. It also helps me understand the benefits, which I wanna to talk to you next about, some of the benefits of a rental debt snowball and why you might wanna use it in your own business. So you probably already know this, but in everything in real estate investing, or really any business or investing strategy, there's good and there's bad. There's pluses and there are minuses. So I wanna go over the benefits and I'll also share a few of potential downsides of using the rental debt snowball. The first thing I really love about it is the control it gives you over your wealth building. So when, when you're trying to achieve financial independence, and particularly if you're trying to do it early in a 10, 15 year period, you know, there's, there's multiple ways to get there. 
you can invest in the stock market and kind of wait for stocks to go up in value and your net worth to increase. You can own rental properties and wait for them to go up in value and own in the path of progress where things get a lot better and you can use appreciation to build, build your wealth. But I really like using the income from the property, which you, you've already heard about here, saving that income and then paying the loans down. That's something you have control over. And rents do have a little bit of fluctuation. They, in down markets, they might soften up a little bit and you gotta lower your rents, but they're not nearly as volatile up and down as prices are. And so it's like a little engine. Every year, you're saving your money, you're reinvesting it, and you're paying your loan down. And that's something you can control. You can look out 10 years from now or five years from now and say, this is what I'm gonna pay my property off. This is, a, and then you have a very, a lot of control over that as opposed to letting the market and, and other people control the process. So that's a big important thing, number one. Number two is I like the measurable, visible progress you make towards your goals. So if you have a goal and you believe you can hit it and you can actually have milestones along the way. So every month you're seeing your loan go down and then three or four years later, it's paid off. You're, you're hitting these milestones where you can celebrate, you can enjoy it, and you can't underestimate the psychological value of that kind of progress. That's really big. It works in sports. When I played sports, having those milestones is really a bit big and it works very well in real estate investing too. And the third thing I like is the flexibility. You know, everything in life changes. Your plans are gonna change. We know that. So when you have a 10 to 15 year wealth building plan, you're gonna have to be flexible. And this allows you a lot of flexibility. What if you get one property paid off and then you lose your job? You need to take a break for a while. You could put it on pause. You could put the debt snowball on pause, not pay down any more loans for a while until you get your job back, till things you know work out, and then you can get back on the plan later on. So you can start, you can stop, you can go faster if you want. If you get a big inheritance or you win the lottery, you can pay this off a lot faster. So it has a lot of flexibility, you, is measurable, visible progress, and you have control. Let me give you a couple of the potential downsides just to kind of balance this and give you a, a whole picture of how this how this debt snowball works. So a couple of the downsides that I see with a rental debt snowball that you might get from other people or you might consider for yourself. And the first one is self, you have to have a lot of self-discipline over many years to make this work. So that's just the way it is. There's no, there's no sugarcoating that, that even in the short term, a five to seven year period, you have to save money consistently every single month, every single year. You gotta not spend that money. You gotta reinvest it and pay the loan down. And that's not an easy feat. It sounds pretty simple to do, but it's one of those things that's simple and not easy. So you gotta know yourself. You gotta know, am I willing to commit to something for a 10 year period, 12 year period? If it means that at the end of that 12 year period, I'll have free and clear properties and I'll be able to leave my job or I'll be able to have more flexibility with my job, have financial independence, do what matters. You know, that's that's the question, but that's really not a question even just for rental debt snowballs. That's the question for any kind of investing. It takes self-discipline. And, and you think about a lot of the plans out there, retirement plans, we're talking about 20, 30 years, they're asking you to wait. And we're talking about being disciplined and focused and you can still enjoy your life and have a lot of fun in the meantime, but you're saving a lot of money and you're paying debt down during that 10 to 12 year period. So that is definitely a challenge, something you need to be aware of up front. The other thing you might hear is, hey, you're paying off loans, and for example, at four and a half percent interest. So the, the best you're doing is making a four and a half percent return when you could be investing that money somewhere else that makes a 7% return or a 10% return or a 20% return. And there's no sugarcoating that either, is that yes, you are choosing to pay off debt, you are not choosing to maximize your growth. But let's go back to the whole point of why you're doing this. And this would be my, my counterpoint, is that you are trying to achieve financial independence. And the mechanism of doing that is building wealth, which you do by owning rental properties. You put down payments, you hopefully they're growing over time. But you're also trying to achieve financial independence, which yes, has to do with maximizing the amount of wealth you have, but also has to be about reducing risk by paying off debt, increasing your income so you can live off of that. And so there's always a balance between those things and there's no, there's no free lunch, you gotta trade things off. And the idea, and this has been a personal experience of mine, is that if you can get to a point where you have a very low risk portfolio, and in my book, Retire Early with Real Estate, I call that having a income. That's really what you're doing here. You're kind of building a, a base, a floor underneath your portfolio so that you get this nice low risk income coming in. And that doesn't mean you can't also invest for growth somewhere else. 
Like maybe you do this debt snowball on part of your portfolio. You also have a 401k that invests in the stock market or in real estate, or you have some other rental properties that you're trying to maximize growth on. And these are just your income floors so that you can guarantee that you have a nice amount of income coming in just to pay some basic bills. That's the idea here is you're not trying to maximize growth of this part of your portfolio. You've already grown enough. You're trying to get to a point where you can live off the income and reduce your risk. So those are some downsides. If you have any other thoughts in the comments below, let me know. I don't have the only answer here and, and one solution is not always right for everybody. So let's have a discussion in the comments to see what you think about the rental debt snowball as well. So I'd love to hear from all of you in the comments section below. Do you wanna pay the debt off on your rental properties? How do you feel about carrying debt versus paying it off? When do you think it's a good idea to do that? And if you do want to pay off your debt on your rental properties, is the debt snowball a technique that you plan to use? If you like this video, I'd really appreciate hitting that like button. It helps us spread the word and share it with other people on YouTube. And if you're new here and you haven't done it yet, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the little bell so you don't miss any of the future videos I have coming out soon. If you'd like to get free tools on how to invest in real estate, they're actually the ones that I use to invest in my own business, look in the description below. There's a free real estate investing toolkit link and you can just put your email in and you can get that for free. It includes things like my deal worksheet that I use to evaluate properties and I have the questions and negotiate with people when I'm buying properties has a closing checklist to help you when you're buying a property so you don't forget anything. And it has a lot of other tools that'll help you on your journey to financial independence. So just click that free toolkit link in the description below. I really appreciate you spending some time with me here today on Coach Carson TV. My name is Chad Carson. You can also call me Coach. And this is a channel all about investing in real estate so you can achieve financial independence and do more of what matters. See you next time.